Hi and welcome back to Studio Tamara the Mystical Paintress. Today I'm going to be doing a plain air painting in the studio because as you can see I couldn't stand in the middle of this road and paint this and I love this road scene. Happens to be a road that gets a lot of traffic so I took a picture of um, the road and I have it here on my iPad but just to show you something really cool, Rod Doberman. Um, if you have a television in your studio, you can hook up iPads or cell phones, and then you have the image. And if you have a real good high-def TV, it will be very close to what real life looks like. And this is super good also for any of you that are um, homebound, you don't go out in the cold, or you know maybe that's not even an option for you. So you could use outdoor photos and get the feeling um, of plein air painting this way. So we are gonna attempt to do this little road and we're gonna have a lot of fun. Stay tuned. If you like my videos, please hit like and subscribe. It's free, helps out my channel. Thank you to all my Patreon um, sponsors, even a dollar a month helps the channel keep going. And thank you to everybody who has shown such an immense amount of support for my book, Plain Air Painting, Tips and Tales, Memoirs of a Plain Air Painter. Thank you to Outdoor Painter for rating this in the top 25 of all landscape books all artists should have. I was unbelievably shocked. Richard Schmidt's on that list and Hawthorne and I thought it was a prank at first. Anyway, let's get painting, you ready? My palette for plein air painting is the same as studio painting. I did a video specifically on the colors and the order. If you do your colors in the same order every time, you will it will become like second nature when you're doing color mixing. Um, so anyways, here's my palette. I know it's a little messy. My favorite brush to use is a size six filbert, which means the top has like a rounded tip on it. And here is our scene we are going to do a vertical composition meaning up and down horizontal would be flat across i know that's very basic most of you already know that and we are going to just start so i look at the the picture and i see this i see this is like a little driveway and we've got this little Hill. The hill's like here. Oh, now see, we've got a problem. That's putting the horizon halfway across, so this is a good learning opportunity. So let's get our other side of our road in, and we are going to have to correct that. So we're going to drop this road down here, and we're going to make it a little thinner. Just a little too big, I think. Okay, and there we go. So as things move away from us, they become smaller and more narrow. And then we have a hill here. And I'm just squinting and putting in some of these things I see. So, let's see. Okay, you're done. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Sometimes it seems like you should be when you're doing this stuff. You're like, oh my God, how much more is there? So I just added a little cobalt, a little cerulean blue to my, my dark muddy gray mix. And I'm just pulling this down. A little more of my dark muddy mix because I had to lighten that because as you can see, these trees here are darker. So if all my background is dark, then my foreground can't really be dark. And then, yeah, then you have no perspective. So we're going to just color this in real quick. And I'm just... I do a lot of scrumbling, especially early stages. This is just how I paint. It goes through paintbrushes terribly. It's an awful habit. But unfortunately, once you start painting a certain way, it's really difficult to break that habit. So also, I really don't know that I would get the effects that I get 
um, if I did it another way. So, such is life. Okay, oops, I just painted on the camera. Oh well, I'm an artist. So, out here is like this hazy, foggy light area. So, we're going to put it in hazy, foggy, and light. Might have to add a little more white. Don't be afraid ever to put colors and things because, quite honestly, you can always go over them. Always, always, always go over them. So, like, don't be afraid. All right, there is our far away. Now we're going to add a little purple to this brownie mix here. A little more white, a little gamsol. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and do that. I've been wanting to paint this for so long. I just haven't had time between the, the Christmas commissions at Christmas time. That's always a really busy time for commissions and um, and all the other paintings I've got. I just never had time. So I'm really excited that I took today to, okay, to do this with you guys. Dipping it in the thinner. I often do that just to make paint move. It helps it move. You can also use various mediums. I'm gonna add a little cobalt to this gray pile. Cobalt blue. Um, you know, like you can use liquid and walnut oil and various things. Um, I love lavender spike oil when I'm doing portraits. But when I do plain air, I just keep it as simple as possible. Okay, so now we're going to be working wet into wet, a la prima, all in one session. And so, for example, here, this there's a little stick. This tree comes up, and when I squint, I see a little bit of branches and stuff in the distance, like kind of like this. So I'm just going to put it in, and we can always correct it later, make it, you know, perfect or whatever later. Um get a little more purple into this gray mix. We want it frosty. We, when you use white, it makes things so much colder. Um, and we want that. We want frosty. We want soft edges. We want, you know, the effect of a light snowing day here in the trees in the distance. These are really just branches. There might be a few oak leaves left. But that's about it. So, all right, and we're gonna fuzz this out some because this is a little fuzzier. Often when I do these studies, they're all, they're called um, impressionistic or abstract, and that's not because I'm you know trying to you to to have a certain look. It's mostly just because I am capturing the essence of the scene. I'm trying to capture what colors, what things are standing out and important at that moment. Um, and I don't care about making it look like a photograph. I don't care about any of that <laughs> competitive mumbo jumbo. It's just free expression of what I'm seeing and having a great time. Okay, the middle of the road, if you look up, you'll see the middle of the road has some tire marks, so let's put those in. Just squint. Don't look at this as, oh, that's a tire mark. Oh, that's a tree branch. Oh, you know, don't look at it like that. Look at it as shapes and values. Shapes and values. What's the shape? What's the value? How does it move away from us in the distance? You know, that kind of stuff. So there's our road. And, you know, I have been plein air painting for um, 15 years. Uh, plein air means outdoors. Um, it's French for open air, outdoors, outside painting. Uh, been doing that for, you know, at least 15 years, about once a week, sometimes more, sometimes less. And um, it really centers you in the moment and it helps 
just really helps connect to the colors of nature while you're out there. Um, I would much rather be in this road right now painting this, but I'd be getting ran over. I'd be like the roadkill that you see. <laughs> that would not be good. Okay, so we are continuing down here. I see it does a little bit of this here. So it's it's simple. You just paint what you see, having having a great time doing it. That's the most important thing. If you start to stress out, take a deep breath, close your eyes, count to three, open your eyes, start again, because this is not supposed to be stressful. This is supposed to be lovely. Okay, and these kind of are going to have, I think, a little blue in them from the sky, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, this is a funky little... Funky. I don't know. Is it potholes? What is it? I guess it doesn't matter what it is. You just put in what you see, right? We're starting to get there, folks. As we're painting, we're constantly squinting. And, you know, we've got lost and found edges. We've got um, trees. We've got, you know, just think of it as... Think of it all as just shapes and colors. What shapes there? What colors there? Let's bring this up. Match it here at the edge of the road. We've got a little snow there. Okay. There's a little more purple on the road here. Now when I say a little, I mean a little and you gotta kill it with um, with the white and with a little yellow if it gets too unruly because you just want a hint. You don't want a lot. There's not a lot there. Okay. See how we're starting slowly to form the illusion of a little road here. We're using darks very sparingly, just in very few spots now. Just starting to get them in. So the tricky part <clears throat> about painting on video is that, you know, you're, you got to hold the camera and you got to explain what you're doing. Whereas if you're just painting on your own, you don't have to do that. So I'm mixing some whites for the sky. Sky's pretty bright. The snow's actually brighter. But I'm gonna go ahead, use a little bit of my walnut oil. Put some of the sky. I'm gonna add a little Naples into my mixture just to kind of kill that bright, stark white white. And this layer is very thin. Anything you could possibly paint on top of, you want real thin. Real thin, almost like a wash. There, just like that. Okay. And there is a little hint of some blue in here. colors there. Okay. Now we're going to take a little bit of this light we had in the sky and put a little bit in here between these branches just because it's there. Okay. Next I'm going to get my filbert back out. And I'm going to start putting in some of these dark trees. 
Mixing burnt umber, ultramarine blue, and dioxide purple. And then you just drag it up. There's one tree. There's one here. That's way too dark, but we'll fix that. There's a couple. Wow, that purple's really not good. We don't want all that purple. I'll show you. You just put a little gray and blue right on top of it, and that'll kill it. <clears throat> if it doesn't, you know, yellow will always kill purple. Always, always. The complementary colors will kill each other. <clears throat> but I don't want purple or yellow. <laughs> so, you can wipe it off. So now we are going to be placing in some trees with some brown and blue grays. We're just going to squint. If you wear glasses, this is a great time to take them off because that will help you see dark and light. light. Hold the brush by the tip and pull up, pull up, up. Up. If it's too brown, add blue. Too blue, add brown. Or if you want a little purple, you can also do that. So when I look, I see this branch on this tree comes up. And if, and if your branches aren't moving, put a little more odorless mineral spirits or turpentine or gamsol. And just at the very end, you wanna lift the brush up. That's what will make some of them lighter, okay? And just up we go, up we go. Just copy what you see. If that's too hard to do and you wanna make it up, you can make it up. Um, cool thing and the fabulously exciting thing about painting trees and nature it's not like people nobody's gonna call you out and say oh that tree doesn't have a branch there I mean unless you know obviously you're painting a oak tree and it looks like a spruce tree or something you do have to pay attention to the branches and the movement but you know, if you if you don't have a branch in exactly the perfect spot or whatever, it's fine. So I'm just looking at my reference. And here we go. And there's quite a bit of dark in here. So you can just squint and put some of the darks that are in there. In the back, the further they go, they're gonna be up higher and they're gonna be lighter. So you want your brush lighter. If they're more to the front, they're gonna be darker, they're gonna come down lower. So like these guys are more in the front. Are we having fun yet, folks? There's a potty. Anybody can paint. Anybody can. I'm gonna put a little light here. because I don't really want these trees to, to look like standing alone poles. I want them to look like a, you know, a bunch of trees like they are. And then there's little trees in there. So we're gonna have to put some little, really little bitty trees in. Turn the brush sideways. Make your nice gray. Uh, again, I'm using burnt umber, ultramarine blue, a little bit of violet gray. I look up and I'm just wherever I see. And, and you need to, I'm just going to call it terp. Use your terp and kind of water it down so that it will run. Touch it really lightly like that. Just the suggestion, just the hint of. You know, oh, yeah, there's something there. And this guy actually comes all the way up. This guy comes all the way up. These are some old, majestic, two, three, four, well, maybe not four, but maybe 300-year-old trees here. So you definitely want to try to capture that. But they can't all be exactly the same 
um, value either because there's snow, there's distance. So some of them you look at and they're a little grayed out. So add a little white to some of it too. And if your eye is drawn right to one spot, just take a dry brush, go over it. Isn't this fun? Are you guys having fun? I sure hope you're having a good time because painting is supposed to be fun. If you're stressed out, just pause it, rewind it, watch that spot again, try it again. I have faith in you. I believe you can do it. We're getting there, aren't we, guys? We Okay, I stepped back. That's very good to do every now and then. Step back. Look at your painting. That's very, very good to do. And let's lighten this up a little. Take a little bit of our dioxide purple gray mix. Put a little white in it. And I want to kind of... You know, it's so frosty and everything's far away here. You know, if you're having a really bad day and you're distracted, just pull out some paints, start painting, and it's like you automatically just start to feel better. I don't know what it is, but just put your mind in the moment, takes you away from whatever terrible scary things might be going on in the world or in the politics or in your family and just take a deep breath enjoy your life for a minute so there's our little uh, abstract and then here we're gonna put in a few little mystery branches that I see I see a couple here and in the distance I see some you don't want to do too much because it's you know in the distance for sure a little umber and ultramarine this is really a, a monochromatic meaning just kind of like one color but different shades and values of it like it's very gray you ever notice that in the winter when you look out the window and it looks like black and white almost? <laughs> so we're just going to take and put some brush strokes here and there. And then up above and here too. We're just going to just going to suggest a bunch of stuff cuz Really, all this is is just dead branches and lots of them. It's winter, you know, lots of dead branches everywhere. Branches going left and right, in and out of the painting. I look up and I see all these different. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's almost too much so many and these guys are still real dark so I'm not going to do this like a studio painting I'm just getting an impression of this scene and that's what I really think plein air painting is it's just capturing an impression of something now, if you do want it darker, you absolutely can use black. I, I mean, I don't understand all these rules in art. My favorite thing about the way I do art is I don't have rules. I mean, you have guidelines, but I don't have rules. You want to use black? Here, put a little black in. You like black? By all means, Mary Rupp, one of the best female painters of our time, first female illustrator in the country, First female teacher of the Center of Creative Studies in Detroit. Dear friend of mine, taught me a lot. Just a lovely, amazing woman who literally lived her life for art, and she used black. She said, why wouldn't you use it? It's one of the colors. Just <laughs> words of a somebody fabulous. 
legendary. She's in the book uh, with Frida Kahlo, even. Gosh, I wish I had it right here to show you. But Okay, so I'm just looking up, putting, putting all of these complex branches in, and we can create... We can create the illusion of depth, too, just by putting a little more, you know, in here. We don't want it all the same color and value, so I would say add white, obviously, to things further away. And when I look here at my reference, there's a lot of stuff further away, isn't there? These almost even almost touch. There's so much going on out here further away. So we're going to put that in. I'm just using a lighter mix and doing a little scrumble scrumble. You can do this too. You absolutely can. You know, when COVID's cleared up, if some of you out there, uh, like I know Darlene McBroom, my friend, she wants to come and paint with me and maybe take some classes, absolutely. Any of you that would like to do that, let me know and we will... Uh, Set it up, obviously not right now, but um, I'd be happy to, I'd love to. So this is a very impressionistic, uh, I say this in a lot of my videos, but when I do a studio painting and I put 40, 80, 100 hours in, it's so much different than when you do a plein air study just to capture movement, colors, you know, the, the atmosphere of a place, the feeling of a season. Um, it's very different, very different. So I appreciate one of my um, comments. Somebody said your paintings are getting better. Well, thank you. I um, almost uh, want to do a studio painting video to show you that I actually can paint some. Sometimes things turn out real good, but... Uh, that would be way too long. I think 80 hours you guys would be sleeping on me. So be snoring. You'd be like, okay, we're, bo we're bored. We're done. So we have this tree illusion. We've got some branches kicking around. How's yours coming? Take a break. We are moving right along. Things are looking good. So now we're going to take a dry brand new brush and just kind of touch anywhere that looks a little gobbly gooky and kind of smooth it out some. Any real sharp branches or sharp edges, you probably don't want them unless it's in your focal area like this one you do. Watch that your branches aren't too wormy. Tree branches generally, I mean, they'll have a little wave to them, but some people tend to get the worm going. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. We are about to the point where we can start to put the snow in here. All right, so for the snow, we are going to need to use white and a palette knife. So snow, when it's further away, is a bit warmer, and as it gets closer, it's cooler. So warmer means um, a little more yellows. Cooler means more blues. And so our snow, I've got my palette knife here. I have a big one and a little one. And um, let's see here. I think we're gonna use the littler one further away. So far away is gonna be a little warmer. So we're gonna take a tiny bit of Naples. We don't wanna overdo this, because this is very monochromatic. Take a little Naples in here in this snow and mix it with your palette knife. Hopefully you've been practicing. And we're gonna wipe the bottom of the little palette knife off. This is like, oop. Got some on my hands. This is like the one inch palette knife. 
and we're going to load the bottom. And when we look at the reference, a little bit further away, I'll bring this so you can see it, a little further away, it's like that. And if that doesn't work, we might have to make a little, put a little blue in there, but we're gonna see. It almost looks like it's too warm though. But as we come forward, add a little blue, which makes it cooler. And of course, white. It's kind of like if you've ever put frosting on a birthday cake or cream cheese on a bagel. And this is really the best way to show you how. So I'm going to take some of my white here and just kind of get it in there. Uh, we do need a little more blue here. This is cooler. So we're going to put a little more blue in. And if it's looking too green and we really want to just nail it with some white white we're going to put straight white titanium white and work on this for a little bit uh, i feel like maybe even a little cobalt see with oil paint it's constantly you know working too blue add this to this add that it's like a it's a series of solving problems that's really really what painting boils down to and uh, that's what makes it fun okay little bit here on the sides. We're going to go over this with a brush. So if you're panicking right now, please don't. Just have fun and trust the process. All right, now, gobbledygook, time to get a brush. So now as we squint and we kind of try to figure out, take a little brush and just work the edges here a little. You know, we don't want sharp edges. And look at the road. Here there's a little brown and gray. Got a little dark here. A little dark here. There's little potholes or something here. When you look at it, just paint what you see and have fun. There's a little pothole here. I think maybe. One here. A little darkness here. It's a little darker too over here, I notice. The road is. And it's a little darker up here. Comes down in. It's darker there where it goes to that little driveway. It's a little darker here. Okay, and then I'm gonna get a little, 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 little square brush like this, and get a little bit of the white, and really just stop and try to mimic the best I can exactly what's going on up here. So, like, there's a little. 
this looks like a little snow pile right in the middle of the road here, doesn't it? Comes out like an arrow point. Well, it's very obvious. It's right here. wonder if it has anything to do with these people's driveway here. Maybe. And then we got our little... snow that goes up into Never Never Land up here. And we're going to have to knock the edges off of that. It's a little too bright. And we're going to have some snow. I'm going to add some cobalt blue to this snow here because it's close up. So it's colder. So I want a little blue in here. Put a tar car track in there. It's hard because you have to be very careful. If you overdo it, that's not good either. So I don't want to overdo it. I want to make sure this is just about as realistic as I can get it. It's almost got purple-blue in there. It's a little dirtier. Dirty. It's a road, of course it's dirty. <laughs> this is a little dirtier. Kind of does that. And then there's a little mark there. Yeah, we're starting to get it. We're starting to get this little road. Uh, this goes like that. This comes down and then kind of goes that way, doesn't it? How fun. I took this picture, I don't know, two weeks ago, and I've been wanting to, to put in this, all this snow and do all this fun stuff and do this painting. But I partly hadn't done it, just out of being busy. So you notice now I'm taking the brush and I'm picking up a little gray and a little white and I'm just kind of looking at the painting or the, the reference. And wherever I see a little light, I'm just going to put in a little like that. Just keep working. Up here is so small. I, I made it too big, so I gotta correct that. It's, the, the white is very small up here. Like that. Oh, it's starting to, I'm starting to get it. You ever notice if you paint long enough, your paintings go through the uglies where you're like, oh, I hate it. Then it goes through, oh, that's great. And then, oh, I hate it. Yeah, that's a thing. That's a thing with being an artist. Sometimes, too, you add just one more brush stroke and you screw the whole damn thing up. Luckily, if you have oil, you can correct it, but. All right, we are getting there. So there's probably a little more snow in the actual reference than we have here in our painting. Um, looks like the road goes up a little higher in the reference, maybe like this. So take a little blue, you know, just look at your reference. Um, whatever you see. Put it in. I'm going to kind of just leave the uh, side of the road here a little bit, though. I'm not really going to, I'm not going to even try to put detail there because this is just an impression. This is just a plein air. So um, I do want to get some of the big snowflakes, though. So I'm going to grab Grab a little tiny point brush. 
and I'm going to take and put just a couple random snowflakes like this that are a little bigger. They're up front. See how they're, there's kind of some bigger snowflakes in this. So usually I, I have a certain way that I do this, but I'll show you that too. Um, but I'm going to do this first. So just random. Remember, nature is very random. Randomly touch here, touch there. Okay, so we've got a couple of our big snowflakes. Now is the fun part. Are you ready to make it snow? Oh, I know you are. Okay, time to make her snow. Get a brush with a long tip. It can be filbert or it can be, what's this? This is Bob Ross Wildlife Bristle. Oh my gosh, I didn't even know I had a Bob Ross brush. How fun. Um, dip your brush in the turp. Then dip your brush here real good. Kind of make your, your white-blue mix kind of watery. You don't want to use bright white. Because in the picture, I don't see bright white. So we're going to use the blue mix. Water it down a bunch. Then you're going to take your finger. And you're just going to do like this. I know it's scary, but you can do it. I believe in you. It's snowing. Make it snow. See? Put a little more up high you want or don't and there it is you should have fingers full of paint paint on your clothes paint on your nose <laughs> there it is so we're all done with our indoor plain air paintings and um had a lot of fun if you like my videos hit like and subscribe it's free post your paintings below can't wait to see them have a great day Keep smiling. Bye-bye.